the general public was not seeing what I was seeing because these were all private pages. So these are not things that would go viral. And the only time the FBI, the police, or like Facebook really got involved is when one of those videos broke out of those private pages and then it got mainstream. There was an instance I remember specifically of um, these two girls and they were babysitting these kids and they were forcing the toddlers and babies to smoke marijuana and that one went viral. And I remember Facebook came in with their team. We actually had pol the local police from that area work with us and we were able to identify them and apprehend those two. So that would be one of those rare instances where we actually did do something, but it only really happened because it went mainstream, because it went viral. And a lot of the content I dealt with just never became viral because it was in these isolated pockets. Uh, just to go on a little bit more about that, with um, a lot of this content, especially the graphic violence stuff, Facebook had this incredibly weird policy where a lot of abuse, whether towards children, animals, adults, they would leave it on there and they would tell us they would leave it on there because they would say that either a good Samaritan or a police officer would see that content and they would like give a lead to who that person was. And so their idea was, we're just going to leave it on there. So hopefully a good Samaritan will give us some info and then they can get justice to them. What do you think about that? It's a lie because the police don't have our systems. The, the police aren't looking at what we're looking at. They don't, have, they don't have the software that Facebook has to actually look at the type of content that we're looking at. And I wish I realized that when I was in training instead of believing it and thinking that I was making a change and trying to like help these people and animals, even if they're already dead, as long as like their final moments aren't being desecrated in these videos and pictures. And I really did believe that somehow good Samaritans or police were actually going to help see this content, report on it, say who it was in there. But those people aren't seeing it. Only I'm seeing it. Uh, so, so let me ask you. So sometimes when you run a big company, you don't really know what's going on everywhere, right? I mean, uh, uh, so, you know, Facebook's got, give or take, 60,000 employees. That's a pretty big organization they got. Some sites say they get 1.87 billion unique visitors per month. Some sites say they get 2.5 to 2.8 billion unique visitors per month, users per month. Okay, whatever the number is, let's say 2 billion. That's a lot of people that come to their website on a monthly basis. So you got 60,000 plus employees. You got 2 billion users actively that are logging onto your website. You're, you're the largest country in the world, essentially. China's got 1.5 billion. India's got 1.4, 1.5 billion. You got two billion. You're a country. You're a virtual government. Do you think this stuff is stuff that maybe it's so far away from Zuck's hands that he doesn't even know this, this stuff is taking place? No, he knows what's taking place because his hands are all in it. Like this is his creation. And as we've seen through his multiple appearances with Congress and the way he speaks in any sort of interviews, he obviously presents himself, presents himself as someone that has his hands in all the, all the pies, so to speak. Um, what I think is the problem is one, he, Facebook has grown too big and needs to be cut down into sizable chunks. Maybe they need to be operated by different individuals that are not affiliated with him. But the biggest problem I had was just the reallocation of resources was terrible. There was, so, I talked a little bit about this AI that we were using that was trying to help with graphic content. What the AI was primarily being used for was looking at sexually suggestive photos, not even photos that were sexual, not even photos that showed anything. It wasn't any pornographic images. So examples, like if there's a picture of a girl and she has her butt sticking out in the photo, she's wearing all clothes, the, the AI needed to know if that was a butt focus picture or not. Or a lot of the times we would just look at the pictures and we would just identify if something was cleavage as in the indentation between the breast, that was cleavage. 
There was another one of identifying women in swimsuits. There was another one that identified nipple or areola. So we actually had to train the AI to look at something and see if they could just identify the areola around the nipple. So this is what a lot of the AI resources were going to, not graphic violence, not child pornography, not any of these terrible things. It was going towards these sexually suggestive photos and videos. And it was just a terrible use of the AI. There was absolutely no need to teach an AI how to categorize that content because none of that content was breaking any policy because even though we were working with it, we were never actioning that content because there was nothing ever wrong with the content. For some reason, they just wanted that categorized. So if you like this little short clip from an interview I did, click over here to watch the entire interview. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.